Well, hi there, everybody. Welcome back. We've got the real Dickensian tale here for you today is the uh, Boston Braves, the worst of times. Go over to Pittsburgh today on the Pirates, who have uh, exemplified the best of times so far this season up until very recently. Pirates are 3-7 and seven over the last 10. I believe the Braves are either 2-8 and eight or 1-9, and nine, and uh, it's going to be Pete Reeser up there who takes the ball from uh, Cliff Chambers, and another ball, 2-0 and oh, now the count on Pete. 2-1 and one is there is a fastball in there for a strike. There's another one in their middle end for strike 2, 2-2 two two, the count now on Pete. There's one chopped up and over the head of Chambers, the pitcher, and uh, there's just enough bounce on that one for Reeser to be able to make it to first base before the throw, and he's on with a uh, hit, and uh, that makes this a... Uh, uh, well, there's a runner on first base now here early in this one, top of the first, nobody out. Connie Ryan up there now, and uh, Reeser goes off with the pitch. That ball is hit over to uh, right f- or to uh, left field. Kiner's got it. He's going to throw over to third base, and Reeser ends up making it over there to third. That means that Ryan has an 11-game hitting streak, and that'll bring up Marv Rickard. What was I saying about the best of times and the worst of times? Well, you never know what's going to happen as Rickard takes a ball, 1-0, and and 1-1 and now as uh, Chambers comes back with a strike, and that one is ball two in there, too far inside, 2-1 and one the count. 2-2 two two as he fouls one back, and the 2-2 two two pitch is there. That's a curveball low and away, and uh, Ricker couldn't help himself, and he swung a miss of that one for the first out, and here is Jim Russell. Now the Pirates are going to see if they can get that double play. There's a ball and then a strike in there to Russell, 1-1 one one the count. There's a ground ball over to second, and um, it's going to be uh, Bascal who has that one, uh, throws over to Castiglione for one and on to Fleming at first, but uh, that's not in time. Russell, the fast runner, is able to beat that one out. He ends up with the RBI, and it's one nothing Boston. Stinky in there now takes a strike and then a ball one and one the count. There's one fouled up and uh, behind the plate one and two, and there's a little high chop over to first base and Fleming tries to make a play on that one ends up dropping it and that means everybody's safe and there are runners on at first and second now, and Pittsburgh's woes continue. Phil Macy takes a strike and another strike zero oh and two the count that one's hit over to center field. Westlake has to run back on that one that knuckled on him a little bit, but he goes back there and gets it for the out. We go to the bottom of the first inning, and it's Ralph Kiner. Kiner in a little bit of a slump lately. If you can hit uh, 352 and be in a slump, guess what he's done? He hits a fly ball over deep to right field, but not deep enough. And uh, Marv Rickards there for the catch and the first out, one away. Ed Fitzgerald now. He takes a ball, 1 0 now the count on Ed. And there's a ball inside. It's 2 0 on him. And there's a fastball in there for a strike. Two and one the count now. And that's um, hit over to left center field. And that's going to be out of everybody's reach for a base hit. And that'll bring up P. Castiglione with a runner on at first base. Castiglione hitting a good uh, 299. And he takes a strike, a hard 299 with a good slugging percentage. And there's a base hit up the middle. And uh, we're going to play it safe with one out here with Fitzgerald. And uh, the one nothing deficit, of course. That'll bring up Eddie Bachman. Bachman comes up there hitting 253. Runners on at first and second. And he uh, fouls one back. And then uh, takes the ball. One and one, the count now on Eddie. There's a swing and a miss of that slider. It's a one and two now on Eddie. And uh, he takes ball two in there. Two and two, the count. And that is high. Full count now on Bachman. And that's popped up and just out of play. Full count remains in Eddie Bachman. And that is a pitch that is wide. And uh, he lays off of that one and takes it for ball four. That will load the bases here in the bottom of the first inning. Here's still one nothing for uh, Boston. And uh, let's see what happens as Dixie Walker comes up to the plate. Walker, not much power, and he hits the first pitch that he sees over to the left side by Reeser, the third baseman, and that's going to be a base hit, and we're going to send these runners. There goes Castiglione uh, trying for home. Walker will stay at first, and um, he is thrown out of the plate. Bachman takes third. It's a one-to-one ball game, and that'll bring up Wally Westlake. Three hits here for the Pirates in the inning. Westlake takes the ball wide, 1-0 the count. That's up high, 2-0 and now. Fouls one back, two and one now the count on Wally. And there's one up the middle, and that one just gets through for a base hit. We're going to keep Walker at second base, and that one scores the run. It's two to one now Pittsburgh, and here comes Les Fleming. Fleming hits the first pitch he sees over to right field. Marv Rickards there for the catch and for the out. And uh, we go to the top of the second inning. Score now two to one. Clint Conatzer. Uh, Comes up, Kanatzer, I hope I'm saying that right, and hits uh, the first pitch he sees over to a right field where it drops in front of Dixie Walker for a base hit. That'll bring up Al Lakeman. So a lot of uh, unusual players here starting today for both teams. And uh, Lakeman takes a strike and another strike. 0-2 oh, to the count now on Al. And that one is high. It's 1-2. and two. There's a sinker outside, 2-2 two and two now on Lakeman. And there's a inside pitch, and Lakeman is fooled, and he strikes out on that one. One away, and it's uh, Vern Bickford 
takes the ball high, 1-0 the count now in Vern. Bunts that one over towards first base, and Fleming grabs it and uh, tags him out easily, and uh, the runner, Canaster, moves up to second, and it's uh, Pete Reeser who fouls the pitch off and then swings and misses at another one. 0-2 oh, the count, and that ball is a little below, 1-2. and two. There's one high, 2-2 two and two now the count on Reeser, and he gets a nice and level swing and base it over left field, and um, here comes Ryan, uh, Ralph Kiner's throw to the plate, and that one is wild and gets Pat Fitzgerald. That allows Reeser to move up to uh, third base, and, of course, the run scores. That makes it a 2-2 two to two ball game. Connie Ryan up there now, two errors so far in the Pirates, who are still their own worst enemies. 2-0 and oh now the count on Ryan, and that's inside for a ball three and no the pitch. And uh, there's ball four in there, and uh, that's the walk. And here comes Marv Rickard, who takes a strike. Oh, and one is the count on him. That's in the dirt for ball one and one the count. And he uh, fouls that one off just barely. One and two, now the count on Rickard. Fouls that one back, still is one and two, and that's fouled off again. Next pitch in there is inside for a ball two and two the count now on Marv, and he swings and misses a one up and away, and that'll do it. We go to the bottom of the second inning, and it's Monty Bascal. 2-2 ball game, pretty good ball game here early. Pascal hits the first uh, pitch he sees and uh, pops it up to Stanky at second base for the first out. One away, and here is uh, Cliff Chambers who pops one up. Phil Macy, the catcher, has that one for the out. Two away, and it's Ralph Kiner. Kiner, as I said, still in kind of a slump, now down to 349. 2-0 and is the count on him. And uh, that's low and inside. 3 no the count on Kiner. The Pirates uh, need him to get on base, and he takes the ball four for the walk. That's what gets the offense going. And here comes Ed Fitzgerald, who takes the ball high. 1-0 and the count on him. Bickford having some control problems. And the next pitch still not coming. More throws to first. We're not doing anything with Ralph. That's a hanging slider high. 2 no the count. And there's one lifted up in the right center field, and Russell has that one for the out. We go to the top of the third, and it is Jim Russell up there for the Braves. Russell takes the ball and then fouls one back. One and one the count now on Jim. And that fastball is just low. It's two and one. And there's a ground ball over to the right side. Pascal has that. Throws over to first for the out. One away. Eddie Stanky up there now. Takes the strike in the inside corner. And then takes one away. One and one the count on Stanky. There is ball too low. And there's a ground ball over to Bachman to third base. He makes the play and throws to first for the out. Two away. And it's uh, Phil Macy who takes the ball. Fouls one back. One and one the count. Hitting 156. There's ball two to him. Two and one. It's a little quiet fly ball over to center field. Westlake's there for the out. We go to the bottom of the third, and it is Pete Castiglione. He hits a little ground ball over to the right side. Bickford grabs that, throws over to Lakeman for the out, one away, and it's Eddie Bachman. A lot of first pitch swinging here. Bachman takes a ball, and there's a breaking ball in there for a strike. One and one the count on Eddie. There's strike two, one and two, as Bachman swung at that one, and then he hits a fly ball over to Canaster in left field for the second out, and that'll bring up Dixie Walker. Two, two, the score still, and Walker takes a ball away, one and no the count, and that it's another ball, two and no the count. And there's one foul back, foul tipped rather, two and one. And there's a ground ball over to the shortstop, uh, Ryan, who makes the play and throws the first for the out. We go to the top of the fourth. So both pitchers starting to calm down here as uh, Clint uh, Kanatzer takes the ball and then a strike, one and one the count. And there's a little base hit into the right field corner. It's going to be a double for Kanatzer. That'll bring uh, up Al Lakeman now with the runner on in scoring position. Both Lakeman and Kanatzer, I think both of them have hit, have had more plate appearances here in the replay than in real life already. One and two, now the count on Lakeman as he fouled one away, and that uh, fastball was in on the hands, and that got him for strike three. One away now in the top of the fourth with uh, the potential go-ahead run on second, and Vern Bickford with an 0-1 count on him hits a uh, ground ball up the middle for a base hit, and that'll score Kanatzer and uh, puts Bickford over on at first base. 3-2 to two Boston now, and again, the best of times and the worst of times, well, it looks like is the worst of times for the Pirates here, as Reeser hits a fly ball over to Dixie Walker in right field. He's got it there for the out, two away, and it's Connie Ryan. 3-2 Boston. Ryan takes a swing and a miss, 0-1 oh, and the count, and then looks at a breaking ball wide, 1-1. One and one. That's low and inside now, 2-1 and one is the count on Connie. That's high and inside, 3-1 and one is the count on him. And there's ball four low and away, and that puts runners on a first and second, still with two out here in the top of the fourth. Marv Rickard up there takes a strike, and then a ball high, one and one the count. It's high and outside, it's two and one. That's hit up over into the air in the left uh, side. Uh, Ralph Kiner's got that one for the out, and we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Wally Westlake will lead this off for the Pirates. Westlake takes the ball off the plate, one and no the count, and that's just high, two and no now the count on Wally. And hits one up uh, to the right side and uh, out of play off the roof of the dugout. Two and one the count. And there's a ball to him, three and one. And there's a breaking ball for ball four, and that'll bring up Les Fleming. Not much break on that breaking ball. And Vern Bickford has walked three and keeps 
getting in trouble. Fleming fouls one off to the left side. Owen won the count on him, and he takes the ball inside as one and one, and he hits a sharp hit into right field for a base hit. And uh, Westlake again will um, hold it second down one run. There's no reason to be uh, foolish and foolhardy here. They'll bring up Monty Bascal, and the question here is: Do you bunt or do you swing away? I think we bunt with him. Infield is in at the corners. And he misses the first pitch. 0-1 is the count on him. That one's bunted back towards the mound. And uh, Bickford has it and throws over to Stanky, the uh, second baseman covering a first base. But both runners move up. And that means with one out here, here is Cliff Chambers, who's the, the uh, pitcher, who's hitting 353 so far this season with five RBIs. And he has a chance to do a little bit more. And he does. First pitch he sees, he drives to right center field. And that one gets between Rickard and Russell. Chambers winds up over at second base. And this is a 4-3 to three ball game just like this. And here comes Ralph Kiner. The big man can do some damage. Takes the ball low, 1-0 and the count to Ralph, and that's inside 2-0. and Fouls that one back, 2-1 and the count now on Ralph. There's a liner just foul, 2-2 two and two now the count. And that's up high, full count now on Ralph, and that's hit to left field, and there it is. That's home run number 11 of the season for Ralph Kiner. Bingo, see you later. And uh, make sure that you got the uh, storm windows closed, Mama, because that ball is coming 6-3 to three now the score with uh, the Pirates uh, scoring four here in the bottom of the fourth. And it's Ed Fitzgerald hits a ground ball over to Ryan, who makes the play and throws over to first. That's only the second out of the inning, and here comes Pete Castiglione. He takes the strike, 0-1 oh, the count, good breaking ball, and he pops that one up over to the right side. Lakeman running after that diving, but can't come up with it. 0-2 oh, the count now on Pete. It's up high, 1-2 and two now. And, uh, yep, that ball hit him. That's a ball that hits Castiglione up in the shoulder, and he goes over to first base, and here comes Eddie Bachman. Bachman takes a uh, breaking ball down the heart of the plate for a strike. 0-1 the count. There's a changeup in there for strike two. 0 and 2 That's hit hard and up to center field, but not quite deep enough. It's a, it's an airport out there, of course, and uh, Russell has that for the out. We go to the top of the fifth. Here is Jim Russell, and he fouls one back. 0-1 of the count. Swing and a miss. It's 0-2 now on Russell. And that's a ball just low, one and two the count. There's one in on the hands, it's two and two, and that's high and away, full count now on Jim. And Chambers ends up losing him for his third walk of the game, and that'll bring up Eddie Stanky. Six to three the score, Stanky takes one inside for a ball, and there's a strike, one and one the count now on Eddie. There's a strike two called on him, one and two the count, and the fastball is high and away, two and two. That is beaten foul just down the third baseline, just foul. And another foul ball hit by Stanky, 2-2 two and two still, and that one's inside, full count. Chambers is in danger of losing him, and he does, and that's walk number four given up by Cliff Chambers. That one was just inside. Runners on at first and second now, nobody out top of the fifth. 6-3 Pirates, but that can change in the second, and uh, Phil Macy up there with a the 1-2 count on him. Pops one up foul, just out of play, 1-2, and two, and here it comes, and there's a little pop-up over to the right field. Dixie Walker's got that for the out, one away, and here's Clint Cunaster. Takes a strike, oh, and won the count. And there is a uh, change up low, one and one. That's fouled away. One and two, now the count on Canaster. There's a swing and the miss as he chased that one, and that's strikeout number five for Chambers. Two away, and here's Al Lakeman, who takes the ball inside. One and no the count. And that one's lined straight to Kiner in left field for the third out. We go to the bottom of the fifth as Dixie Walker. So the Pirates hoping that their fortunes change and hoping that they can get a little bit of that treasure they've been seeking. 0-2 oh, the count now on Walker, 1-2, and two, as there's a ball in there to him. That's hit towards the middle of the diamond, towards the uh, right between Ryan and Stinky for a base hit. That will bring up Wally Westlake. And, uh, boy, best of times and the worst of times, and the uh, fortunes have changed here in Pittsburgh's favor. Westlake up there, pops one up, and it's Lakeman, the first baseman, who has that one for the out, one away, and it's Les Fleming. Fleming takes the strike, 0-1 oh, the count now on Les. 1-1 one one as, uh, as Nels Potter, the new pitcher, misses. There's strike two in there, 1-2 and two the count now on Fleming. Foul the way, still 1-2. and two. And um, he swings and misses that high fastball for the second out, two away, and it's Monty Bascal who takes the ball inside, 1-0 oh, the count. Uh, interesting, a lot of uh, games here in this replay so far where pitchers haven't gone quite five innings for the computer. 2-0 and oh, the count now on uh, Bascal, 2-1 and one as he takes a strike. There's a little ground ball over to uh, the third base side, and that's ruled foul at the last second. 2-2 two and two the count now on him. And, uh, boy, <laughs> Potter gets that good breaking pitch in there, and he uh, swings and misses that one and strikes out. We go to the top of the six. And it's Sibby Sisti, the uh, new left fielder in there, who's hitting a woeful 148, takes the strike, and then hits a ground ball to Castiglione at short. And he bobbles it and can do nothing with it and has to eat it. And it's uh, air number three for the Pirates. That'll bring up Pete Reeser. 
Reeser now and uh, takes a strike. Good pitch at the knees. 0-1 oh, the count. And there's a ball. 1-1 one one now the count on Pete. That is fouled away. 1-2 uh, and two the count. And uh, there's a little ground ball over to uh, Cham- er, uh, Chambers. The pitcher goes over to the uh, left side and grabs that one. Flips over to uh, Fleming for the out. Sisti moves up to second. I say the left side, his left side, not ours. Our right side. Ryan up there now. Connie Ryan takes a strike. It's a little ground ball down to Pascal, the second baseman, who uh, looks over, has no play at third, throws to first for the out. Sisti moves up to away. It's Marv Rickard with the runner on a third base. Rickard takes a strike, swings and misses a one. Uh, oh, and two the count. And there's one head deep to left field, and uh, that's going to be in there for extra bases, and that's a double for Rickard as that was over Kiner's head. Not very deep in left field, but uh, Kiner's not a very great fielder, and that will score the run. Six to four now the score. Jim Russell up there with the uh, runner on at second second base and he quickly takes two strikes and then a ball one and two the count now on Jim and uh, boy that was inside and Russell chased that one um, and uh, strikes out and uh, we go to the bottom of the six and it's uh, Cliff Chambers now the pitcher's uh, pitcher up there for the Pirates and he uh, hits a ground ball over to Ryan the shortstop who makes the play throws over to first for the out one away Ralph Kiner up there again hit home run number 11 last time up one and one the count now on Kiner. He was up last in the fourth inning. And uh, two and two now as he swings and misses a one. Curveball's high. Full count now on Ralph. And that one is low. And he will draw the walk. And that does it. And I'm going to pause this for a second. I'll be right back. All right. That wasn't too bad. And uh, so here we are going again. And we've got Ralph Kiner on at first base now for the Pirates. Uh, one out here, bottom of the sixth inning, is Ed Fitzgerald, who uh, takes a strike. Uh, oh, and one the count. His throw to first base, but Ralph not doing anything. Remains 0 oh and one. There's a strike right in there. Oh, and two the count. Kiner's not going to run much for you, despite the fact he's a leadoff hitter. We like him up there because he gets, keeps getting on base. And there's a liner over to Stanky at uh, second base, and he grabs that one for the out, throws over to first, and they've got uh, Kiner uh, mixed up. He's unable to get back in time, and that's a double play. We go to the top of the seventh. Six to four, Pittsburgh still. And here is Eddie Stanky, who made that great play, takes the ball, and then another ball. Two and no, the count now on Stanky. It's fouled away. Two and one now, the count on him. Here's a grounder wide at first, uh, and that's going to be a base hit between Pascal and Fleming. Stanky on base uh, once again, and uh, here comes Phil Macy, who promptly uh, launches a base hit down the first base line, and um, uh, Walker unable to uh, do much with it, and uh, Stanky goes over to third. Macy now the runner on at first. So two quick base hits here in the top of the seventh for the Braves, and uh, that will bring up... uh, Nels Potter, the pitcher, will see if they leave him in, and they're going to pinch hit for him. It's going to be Bob Elliott. Stanky at third doesn't matter that much. It's the other runner we care about. There's a strike in there to Elliott, and he fouls one away. 0-2 oh, the count on him just like that. Fouls one off. Still 0-2 oh, now on Bob. He checks his swing and holds up. 1-2 and two now the count on him. And there's a pop-up out of play. Still 1-2. and two. There's a fastball in there, but too far inside. 2-2 two and two the count now. That's high. Full count now on Elliott. And there's a ground ball um, over to uh, second base. Pascal over to uh, Castiglione at the bag and on to Fleming at first for the double play. But the run scores. 6-5 to five now the score. And here comes Al Lakeman. So this is an exciting one again as Lakeman takes a strike. And then another strike. 0-2 oh, the count on him. 1-2 <clears throat> and two as that one was low. And uh, there's a pop-up out of play. One and two still to count on Al. And he hits one into right field for a base hit. And that'll bring up Sivy Sisti. Sisti fouls one away off th- at the plate. Oh, and one the count. And then takes a ball. Runner on at first base. Two and one now the count. Six to five Pirates with the lead. Sisti swings and misses a one away. Two and two is the count on him. And there's a fastball far outside. Full count now on Sivy. And he swings and misses the next one. And down he goes. And Clint Chambers has the seventh strikeout. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. And it's Pete Castiglione to lead this off. See if uh, the Pirates can get a little bit of insurance here. Castiglione takes a ball inside. One and no the count. And uh, there's a foul ball. One and one now the count on Pete. And uh, two and one is that one uh, just misses. And that's high. Three and one now the count on him. Bob Hall, by the way, the new pitcher. And he throws strike two in there. Full count now on Castiglione. And that one is high, and that's going to be uh, Hall's uh, third walk of the season, first tier of the game. And, uh, yeah, he hasn't pitched much so far, and uh, he's got a pretty good ERA, but we'll see if that holds up. Here is uh, Eddie Bachman, who uh, watches as the um, throw goes over to first. Castiglione not doing anything, and then he hits one into the right side for a base hit. Castiglione, again, we're going to play it safe with him, and uh, he stays at second. And here comes Dixie Walker with a chance to really blow things up. Runners on in first and second. Nobody out bottom of the seventh, six to five Pirates. And there's a little uh, ground ball over to first base. Lakeman makes the play, flips over to Hall covering, but that moves up uh, both runners, good as a bunt. And here comes Wally Westlake with runners on at second and third, uh, only one out bottom of the seventh. And uh, there's a ball in there to Westlake, 1-0 the count. 
and uh, that's uh, just inside 2-0. and Swung on a miss of that one, two and one to count on him. And there's one over to the left field, and uh, Sisti is there. He makes the catch for the second out. And, uh, of course, it's not deep enough to score Castiglione. Two away, and it's Les Fleming up there now. Fleming takes the strike. Oh, and one is the count on him. And that is high. One and one the count now on Les. It's off the plate. Two and one is the count. And uh, that's fouled straight back. Two and two on Les Fleming. Fouls another one back, remains two and two, and uh, holds up on that one. Full count now on him, and swings and misses of that one, and down he goes, and we go to the top of the eighth inning. So the Pirates did have a chance to uh, really add to their lead, and it didn't quite happen. Six to five, the score is still, and here's Pete Reeser, and he uh, hits a ground ball just to Castiglione's right, and he has no range, can't get there in time. Reeser's on with a base hit, three for five today, and that'll bring up Connie Ryan. So the Braves are getting their hits today, just not getting those runs as Ryan uh, takes a strike and fouls one back, 0-2 oh, the count. Out. That one was low, one and two now. And uh, that's down and away, and he swings and misses at that one. Ryan goes down on strike, strike on number eight for Cliff Chambers, who has almost 150 pitches so far. Here comes Al Dark. Dark takes the ball low, and that one's down and in, and uh, that's going to be a pass ball on Fitzgerald. He's unable to make that play, and you got to wonder if that wasn't really a, a wild pitch by Chambers. He must be tired. There's a strike now on Dark. It's two and one. And there's a uh, ground ball through into left field, and uh, here comes Reeser ready to score. Throw comes home, and uh, Reeser uh, ends up beating it. Beats it pretty much no matter what. And this ball game is tied, and that's probably going to be all from uh, uh, from Cliff Chambers. Chambers goes, uh, what is it, uh, seven, almost seven and a third innings here. Um, he does go seven and a third. Yeah, there is one out. Um, uh, gives up the uh, six runs, 12 base hits, and... Uh, uh, I tell you, it was um, a pretty good performance, I would say, by him um, up until the very end. But this is where the uh, uh, diamond mine baseball and the way that it treats you for throwing a lot of pitches will really come to haunt you. Chambers is with the four walks against the eight strikeouts, but there were a lot of those uh, full counts and a lot of uh, different things like that to worry about. The question is, who do we put in now? Probably Bob Muncrief is going to come in next. And so we will put Bob in to pitch. We'll keep him in the number nine hole, and then we'll pinch hit for him. And here comes uh, Mooncrief up against uh, Jim Russell. And uh, there's a strike on the inside corner. Owen won the count. There's a bouncer into the right side, and that is um, into the hole. Pascal gets there and uh, looks over to the bag, and it says here, what is this? There's nobody covering the bag, and that is an error. should be an error, but it's going to be charged as a base hit. That should really be an error on Mooncrief, who uh, played that one um, incorrectly and so Bob not paying much attention on the first pitch that goes in and um, we'll see if this ends up being a big deal or not still only one out top of the eighth inning 6-6 ball game and it's uh, Eddie Stanky up here Stanky takes the ball low 1-0 the count on him and that's one grounded over first base and down the right field line that's going to be a double for Stanky easily Stanky now two for four and uh, he drives him in uh, with the best of him, and that makes this an 8-6 to six ball game. And so all that uh, Bob Mooncrief has done is uh, give up base hits, two straight base hits given up by him after he's uh, come to this ball game. And uh, what did I say again? It's a more Dickensian uh, logic that's going on, and uh, when you're doing well, you're doing well. When you're doing poorly, you're doing poorly, and the Pirates are kind of wondering where that uh, lucky charm is. Phil Macy with a 3-0 count, he takes ball four all the way. And uh, we're going to have to bring Bob out of there. We'll try with Elmer Riddle now. Elmer Riddle, the next pitcher, third pitcher this evening of this inning for the Pirates. And uh, he finally throws a strike and then gets Hall out in front of that curveball 0-2, the count now on Hall. And he hits one down the first base line, just foul and out of uh, range for Fleming. 0-2, the count. And there's one in the dirt. No swing on that. 1-2, and two. now the count on the pitcher Hall. 2-2 two and two now as that one misses. And Hall uh, swings to that low breaking ball for strike three. Two outs here, and here comes uh, Al Lakeman. Lakeman takes a ball low, hitting 167, and a strike. One and one the count. And there's a single to left field, and that's going to potentially score a runner. And uh, we're going to try to cut off Stanky at the plate. Here comes a throw home, and that throw gets loose. Uh, Fitzgerald having a hard time coming up with that one, and everybody moves forward, and Kiner is, caught, is charged with an air, and that means the Boston has scored five runs in this inning. It's a 10-6 to ball game with two outs here in the top of the eighth. Sibby Sisti up there now takes a strike, and then a ball, one to win the count. And there's a little tapper down the first base line, and uh, it's going to be Riddle, the pitcher, who grabs that one, flips over to Fleming, the first baseman for the out. And so we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, but the Braves end up putting a big five spot up on there in the uh, top of the eighth. Monty Bascal now comes up for the Pirates. It's 10-6. to six. And uh, 
And there's a ball in there to Pascal. Once again, you can see the uh, KDK Pittsburgh um, sort of flavor text that's shown up here. One of those things that I really, really enjoy. And um, we're going to uh, make sure that we uh, get a little uh, picture of that here so that we can use that later on here on the blog. Um, and, uh, you know, as I've said before, I've said this over and over and over again, it's stuff like this that um, I really appreciate because you just don't see this sort of thing anywhere else. Now, let me just make sure that um, this is actually saved where I wanted it to. And uh, maybe it has. Let's see if we can try that one more time. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is the sort of thing that uh, I really enjoy about Diamond Mind Baseball. You know, with all of the flaws in the game, with all of the uh, problems with the game's logic and all of that stuff, um, especially the uh, problems that I've had. Uh, okay, it should be there especially the problems that I've uh, experienced, um, you know, with things like, uh, I don't know, uh, pitcher usage and stuff like that. There's actually a lot of really, really good stuff to uh, enjoy here. And we can see here a, a pretty good example of that. Now, if I can only get this uh, thing to actually work right and to uh, show me the uh, screenshot I just took, I would be a very happy man. It's just not going to show up for me. So I'm going to have to uh, figure this one out. I tell you what we're going to do. There it is. What is it doing down there? All right. I see what the problem is. I see what the problem is. It's because of how we got this sorted. So we're going to go ahead and uh, change this into uh, new was first. There we go. Apologies. Um, you may or may not know this, but I'm currently running uh, Arch Linux instead of Pop! OS. As, uh, Pascal now takes a strike. One and one the count on him. Because of that, I got to get used to a little bit different workflow. There's a swing and a miss by Pascal, and then uh, he takes another one for a ball, two and two the count. Hits one straight to Holmes in right field, and he's got it for the out, one away. Here comes the pitcher's spot, and we're going to take Riddle out of there. We're going to put in Marv Rackley. Marv Rackley is going to be the pinch hitter here and uh, see if he can't get a base hit. Rackley um, is uh, 0 for 1 so far this year, and uh, he hits one uh, wide of third base, and Reeser not only cannot get to that one, but he stops Ryan from doing so as well. And that's a base hit right off the bat for Rackley. That'll bring up Ralph Kiner. Kiner up there now, one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. There's a ball in there to Ralph, one and know the count. And there's a grounder up the middle, and it's going to be Stanky who makes the uh, play. Flips that one over to Ryan for one. The throw on to Lakeman at first, and Kiner just beats that one out, and there's uh, probably some dispute about that call. 10-6 to six the score, so uh, Kiner being on at first base doesn't really matter that much. Here, though, is Ed Fitzgerald, who takes the ball high. 1-0 the count. There's a little hard ground ball over to Ryan, who flips over to Stanky, and they get him this time. And we go to the top of the ninth inning, and it's going to be uh, Tiny Bonham who's going to come back into this ball game. And so uh, Tiny will come back in there. Um, we know Tiny pretty well. Start of five ball games, four and one record with a 2.11 ERA, and he gets a ball in there. And then another ball over to Pete Reeser, and then there's the fastball in there for a strike, two and one the count. That's down the middle, it's two and two. That's a little bit inside, full count now on Reeser, and there's a line drive over to Castiglione, the shortstop who makes the catch for the out one away. Connie Ryan now takes the ball. And there's another ball inside, 2-0 no the count, and a strike. 2-1 and one now the count on Ryan. Ground ball over to Castiglione, the shortstop, who makes the play and throws the first for the out, 2 away. And it's Tommy Holmes who takes the ball, 1-0 no the count. And there's another good one, uh, just misses. And there's ball 3-3-0 three, three no the count, and there's one high and tight. Bonham loses, loses him, and here comes Jim Russell. Russell takes the ball. Got to wonder about walks being a little bit too high here. 2 no the count. Bonham already with 20 walks this season and 43 innings pitched against 23 in real life against 89 innings pitched. 2 no the count now on Russell, and there's a fastball inside. He's going to walk another one, isn't he? And that one is low, and Bonham has two walks in this game so far. Here is Eddie Stanky who takes the ball. Another ball high and wide. If Bonham walks him, we're going to take him out. And there's a little fly ball over to right field. Dixie Walker's got that for the out. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. It's Pete Castiglione down by four. There is one in their first strike. 0 and 1 the count to him. Then 1 and 1 as that one misses. That's outside. 2 and 1 the count now in Pete. There's one in there for a strike. It's 2 and 2 now in Pete. Pop up over in foul ground. Out of play. Reeser can't quite get there. 2 and 2 now the count. There's a ground ball over to Ryan, and he makes the play, throws to first for the out, one away. Eddie Bachman now, and he takes the ball. 1 and 0 the count now in Eddie. And that one is high, but that's called a strike. 1 and 1 now the count of Bachman, and that's tight. 2 and 1. There's a little fly ball over to right field, and it's going to be actually uh, Russell, the uh, center fielder, making that play two away, and Dixie Walker is the last hope. Two for four today. Takes a strike, and then a ball. One and one the count now on uh, Dixie, and that one's high. Two and one now the count on him. Foul ball. It's two and two. 
And this one hit over to center field. Russell has that for the out, and there you go. So the uh, Braves, with the big five-run spot in the top of the eighth, took a 6-5 to five deficit, turned it into a 10-6 to six victory. The Pirates are having some problems. And uh, as I said, it is definitely the best of times and the worst of times, and um, this is what Lady Fate will do to you. 10-6 to six final score, and the Pirates are starting to slip away out of this pennant race. I will talk with you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.